Hello, we here at Cisco Kids would like to welcome you to the Cisco CCNA study topic where we'll be covering loopback interfaces. Now you, be, you may be asking yourself, what is a loopback interface? Well, loopback interfaces are interfaces on a local router that the router will use to communicate with itself. It might not make a whole lot of sense, but they're useful because you can assign an IP address to them as you like and you don't have to apply it to any particular port so it's kinda like applying it to the entire router for example some advanced router configurations require the router to have its own IP address without assigning it to that IP to any particular interface attached to a network loopback interfaces make this easy you create a loopback interface by configuring them for example to create an interface called loopback zero you would go into the configuration mode, tell the router you're configuring that interface, then assign it an IP address as you would with any other interface. So we'll take a moment here. We'll bounce on over to our hyperterminal session. We'll go into enable mode. And we're going to have to go into configuration mode, so config T. Oops bit of a typo there. Now, once we go into configuration mode, we want to specify the actual interface. So we will do interface loopback zero. So now we specified interface loopback zero. From here we go we're dropped down to our configure or interface prompt. So we could specify an IP address, IP address, and we'll pick 192, 168, 2.1 and we'll apply a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. Now we can do a control Z from there to bounce out of that. And the next time we run a show int, the loopback interface we created appears on a list. So let's do a show int and see what we have. The first thing we have is our Ethernet zeros up, line protocols up. And the next thing we see is loopback zeros up and line protocols up. We see the hardware is the loopback. We see our IP address 192.168.2.1 with the subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. Our MTU bandwidth and the things we covered in the previous videos. Now, these interfaces are especially useful when combining two or more circuits into one large one with multi-link PPP and then using BGP over such link. You need to have a single IP address for BGP peer, but when you share several circuits between you and your BGP peer, BGP peer <laughs> you need to have a consistent IP address for each of those peers to speak with. You should never create a loopback interface, really unless you're specifically instructed to by your ISP or maybe if you're working with Cisco or their tech support. But on a similar note, you should definitely know what a loopback interface is and how to use them so they don't surprise you. So that will conclude our video. We hope you found this video to be of use and that it helps you prepare for your Cisco CCNA certification. We're sure you will quickly find that hands-on, real-world experience is the best way to cement the CCNA concepts and to help you pass your CCNA exam. For more information on how you can obtain affordable CCNA or CCMP study kits, as well as to find more of these valuable CCNA topics, please visit us at www.ciscokits.com. The study topics can be found under the CCNA menu, CCNA Study Topics.